America and across Europe. The big names have brought the big money to London and this game is all about making your friends go broke. Each player is starting with a minimum of $100,000 of their own cash and if they lose it, they can simply reach into their own pockets and buy back in. The starting lineup for this game is a who's who of poker. Roland Wolf is the only Brit in the field and he'll be hoping to make home advantage count against some of the biggest names in the game. Howard Lederer is the professor and he'll be using his experience to capture his rival's chips, four bracelets and three and a half million dollars already won. Another American, Alan Cunningham, has picked up five World Series of Poker bracelets and has nearly $10 million worth of cash in the bank. Eric Lindgren is a man who likes to gamble. He has tasted success in 2007 and will be looking to add to his five and a half million prize fund. Chris Jesus Ferguson is a man used to success living in Las Vegas. He has $6 million in tournament prize money. Townsend is a famous online player, but he is used to the big time and is a regular high-stakes cash game player. Hello and welcome to the Full Tilt Poker.com Million Dollar Cash Game in association with 50 London. We're nearing the end of the tournament and the player who finishes with the most overall profit come the end of tonight's show will be crowned series champion. Last week we saw the biggest ever single pot in a televised cash game. If you missed it, here's what happened.
this hand. Now everyone's watching. This pot is 307,000 and it could be getting bigger. Delighted. This is a monster and it is the hand that Phil Ivey has been waiting for. $807,000 pot. Incredible. Absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Patrick Antonius calls that. It's over an $800,000 pot. This is absolutely unbelievable. This very well might be the biggest pot in televised history. Over $800,000 and in just one hand, Phil Ivey has turned it all around. So with 11 of the most notorious high rollers champing at the bit to get going, so are we, as we hand you over to your commentators, Gary Jones and David Tuckman. What do you mean? You couldn't beat the You couldn't beat the Yes, I could. But While they're discussing the last hand, Brian Townsend's going to raise out of first position with two sixes. But if you only bet 4,000, so then you re-race. You could have had one more play. <laughs> he's not going to move all in. You move all in. Roland DeWolf will take the gift. The way he's been running right now. Oh, Tony Key's got a real hand. He's got a couple of tens. And he's in the cutoff seat. That might bring Chris Ferguson in on the button as well. He's got position. He's got a suited King Queen. I'm not convinced you're racing, but you make me Good chance of a big pot here. Phil Ivey and Patrick Three Antonius, times. the ones making a lot of the action earlier on, both out. It's Townsend, Tony G, and Chris Ferguson to the flop. I'm betting, hoping you have exactly that hand. <laughs> and there it is, eight, five, five three. three. Not a bad flop for sixes, but it's a better flop for Tony G with his tens. Some other straight draw that was smaller than eight. I'd imagine. No reason for Brian Townsend not to think his hand is still good. <laughs> Looks like he's about to fire. 6,000. Pretty quick call there from Tony G. Muck from Chris. Oh. Usually a quick call like that is indicative of a, a draw, but in this case he's got the overpair. <coughs> and the pot is $20,000. Seven. Oh, that's an interesting card for Brian Townsend. Check. He's now got an open-ended straight draw. Thousand. Could be getting priced in. Yes, Tony J is bet twelve thousand. The pot is thirty-two thousand. Cool. Ten cards. Yes. Townsend can catch a nine, a six, or a four to win this pot. Here comes the river. Check. That's not the one he's looking for. So Tony G's good at the moment. Check. Twelve. And Tony G is going to put a little thousand. value bet in there. 12,000 into a 44,000 pot. It's kind of a call me bet, isn't it? It is, very much so. What is your usual experience to call me bets? Are they rarely bluffs? Very rarely bluffs. They do happen occasionally. It's, you've got such a good implied odds with the betting so small into that kind of pot. You only have to get one of those through about 30, 40% of the time to make it worthwhile. Pot is 56,000. 12,000 to call. Townsend can only beat a bluff. I mean, it's such a, a rainbow kind of flop. 
can't expect to be up against a bluff on 3-5-8. Well, you look at that board there. If you think about the straight draws, Tony G had 6-7. Well, he picked up, picked up a pair of sevens. And if he picked up 6-4, he's gotten there as well. The only hand he can beat is four deuce. And Towns is going to let it go. He's Good not going to the call. Shows a 10, uh, Tony G. Just the one card. I think he's trying to wind up Brian Townsend. To get started, one player is made the nominated dealer or button. Then the two players to the left post the small and big blinds. These are false bets to get the action started. The big blind is always double the small, but unlike a tournament, the blinds rarely change. However, they are sometimes increased to spice up the action. We start here with $300 and $600. There's also an ante of $100 per player, which must be paid if they want to play in a hand. Once the blinds and antes are posted, everyone is dealt two cards. We have a round of betting. Then three cards are placed face up on the table, called the flop. These are the community cards for all the players to use. Then we have another round of betting, after which the fourth card, the turn, is placed in the middle. This is followed by some more betting and the last community card, the river. Then we finish off with a final round of betting. The best five card hand takes the money. We did have a 10. We beat Ace nine, 10. 9, 10 has a million to one. Beat Ace 10 high? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I could. And Tony G and Brian one. Townsend. The jawing continues. I didn't, that's over my explosion. Big blind is rolling to Wolf. <sighs> the professor name? throws his hand away. Alan Cunningham. I had a big call on the turn. I didn't have my inside. He's not going to play. Really Alan Cunningham. So patient. Uh, still up $60,000. Quite a well. <coughs> Tony G with the suited 8-4. That That's good enough for him to play. 600 to play. 600 yeah. pass. He's called. It's the button of Phil Ivey. He's got queen three of diamonds. You're a good player. What can I say? I expect him to at least call this one. And he's going to do more than call. He's going to raise it up. He's going to take control of the pot. And he might just win it right here. That'd be my guess. I can't imagine... Uh, I want to embarrass myself. Tony G calling with that hand. He shows the filth. He's putting $600 in. And six, seven, Once again, Gary Jones, you are correct. <laughs> you might do well in this game. Yeah. Bunny flop. Oh, the bunny flop. Tony G, $250,000. That's a quarter of a million. He's our big winner right now. <laughs> Howard Letterer in the big blind. And Howard has dwindled under $50,000. Hasn't really played many pots. He must have done something wrong. Tony G, a big winner. And he's got big slick. 600. He's limping in with the ace king. Trying to lay a bit of a trap. Phil Ivey's in the pot as well with his 6-3. On the button, Brian Townsend with king queen. Roland makes up. And Howard checks. We're going to be five for the flop. I want to charge too much for any flop. Letter has got a monster there. 10 3 offsuit. Oh, and there's a king. king. This Brian could check. could get Brian Townsend check. in a bit of trouble. Check. He's got top pair with a queen kicker. But Tony G's got top pair, top kicker. 2,000. He's betting 2,000. That's around half the pot. 2,000. Call Townsend's call. <laughs> 2,000 calls. Pass. A call from uh, Roland DeWolf. Yeah, he's, he's calling with second pair. Three players. He's actually a little bit liver than uh, Brian Townsend is in this pot. Six. That six doesn't Checked. help anyone. Checked. Brian's going to take control of this pot now with the bet, but I don't think he's going to get rid of Tony G. Now, we've seen Tony G play this, this way many times. He kind of plays it a little passively, lets his opponent bet, and he'll just call him down. I don't think Tony G is going anywhere, though. And the advantage with this play, of course, he's going to get to see how Roland DeWolf plays before he gets back to him. A re-raise, and he could know that his ace-king's no good. Yeah, it's, a it's actually really a great play by Tony G. Seven and a half thousand. You're going to watch DeWolf fold here, and then you can just call, and he'll probably check the river and let his aggressive opponent bet. Tony G has been doing this all along, and it's been working for him to perfection. 
You wouldn't think that that baby face is up over a quarter million dollars. And he's going to call. Makes it look like his Seven hand's weak the way he's playing this, but actually he's sitting there with the best hand. And I imagine Townsend is probably going to bet the river for value, the way he's been playing. Let's see what the river is, though. Queen. He'll definitely oh. bet the river for value now. That's kings and queens for okay. Brian Townsend. Oh, wow. I really like the way Tony G played this hand. He just got unlucky on the river. Yeah, there's only three cards for him to lose this pot. That queen is one of them. We're probably going to see a bet of around the 25,000 mark and a call from Tony. <coughs> Yep, and Sheridan, there it is. King Queen. He's got desperately unlucky on the river. King Queen, two pairs. Bad. I knew that was a bad card. Knew it was a bad card, but still had to make the call. I think you need a combination of patience, aggression, and <clears throat> also uh, a lot of stamina. Um, you really need to be able to play long hours and stay really focused and really be on your A game all the time. Welcome back to the Full Tilt Poker.com Million Dollar Cash Game in association with 50 London. It has been a blistering start to this evening's action. Let's hope for more as we get back to our commentators, Gary Jones and David Tuckman. He tries to come off like a loud mouthed amateur, and he's anything but. He really is a very good player. to play. you got to imagine, if the queen doesn't come, I think the bet still comes. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the river probably plays no different. Maybe it's not a 25,000 bet from Brian. Maybe it's only a 20,000 bet, but he still gets some action. Exactly. Race on the button here from Roland DeWolf. Call from Howard Leder. These two, the two with very little chips in front of them. Alan Cunningham with the best hand at the moment. He calls. Three players. For a change, the action up this end of the table. And here's the nine flop. Jack, seven. Jack nine, seven, and what a monster. Nothing like raising and trying to steal on the button with 10, eight and flopping the nuts. Especially when one of the people in the blinds flopped two pair. Yeah, this, this could be dangerous for Howard Letterer. Well, Alan Cunningham's starting the betting. Now, Howard Letterer only has $48,000. Roland DeWolf has about 50,000, and I wouldn't be surprised if all of it went in. Especially with Annan Cunningham kind of leading out here. And here's the raise, an immediate raise with the nuts. I like the play by Roland DeWolf. Chris interested in this spot. He's not got any cards, but... Uh, Too easy for you, Brian. Too easy. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Howard Letter just moved all in right here. The pot is already $22,000. He only has about 48000 behind. Gary, what's your play if you're in Howard Letter's spot? You could even try a stop bet here. A stop, uh, uh, a call, cool and then move in on the turn if it's a blank. I mean, can he get away from it here? I really don't think so. You can easily give an awful lot of hands to Roland DeWolf. Maybe you're right. Maybe he does just move this hand all in. He's only got $48,000. Very difficult for him not to go broke here. Well. I think he said raise. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure he's going to move all in. I can't imagine him raising less than that. And a quick call. And a very nuts. quick call, of course, with Roland. And we've got about a hundred and three thousand dollar pot. And unless a nine or a seven come out, well, he can catch a ten now to chop it. And here's the river. The river's a six. That's not going to do it. Roland DeWolf is going to double through Howard Letterer, and Howard Letterer is our first player to go broke. Congratulations.
here we are with the ranking of the hands. First, we have high card. In this case, a king high would win it. Then we have one pair. In this case, a pair of aces. Then two pair. Jackson nines will do it. Then three of a kind. Three of the same one. Three fours. Then we have a straight. Five cards in order, not the same suit. Then a flush. Five cards, the same suit. Five hearts will do it. Then we have a full house. Three sevens, two kings. This would be sevens full of kings. Four of a kind, four kings. Then we have a straight flush. Five cards in order, all the same suit. And here's the most beautiful hand in the world. Royal flush. Ten, two ace, all the same suit. After getting felted, Howard Lederer comes back to the game and he's rebought for another hundred thousand dollars. He obviously wants a chance to get his money back. Actions on Phil Ivey. Phil Ivey behind his mountain of chips cool. there. Over 880,000 cool. to be exact. He limps in. Brian Townsend cool. limps in with threes. Roland DeWolf's going to limp in with the Jack-10 offsuit. Cool. I imagine Howard Letter is going to call, and he does. Howard Letter with 10 queen. Cool. Tony G's in. And we're going to see this six ways, limped around six ways. Pot is about 5,000 already. <coughs> Jack, 10, deuce. And Roland DeWolf has suddenly gotten really hot. He has top two. Ivy's Check. got up and down. This has the makings of a big hand, possibly. Everyone checks it. Wow, that's a very dangerous play when you're sitting there with top two on that kind of a board. That's an unreal check. I cannot believe he checked that. Check. Well, it's brought three hearts there now. It's going to bring a bet. 3, it's from Phil Ivey. Not only does he have an up and down straight, he's also got the nine of hearts in his hand. In a multi-way pot like that, jack-10, deuce, with two hearts, you have straight draws and flush draws. I cannot believe he actually checked the flop. Well, it's got a semi-bluff out of here, <coughs> Phil Ivey. 3,000's called from the Roland DeWolf. Had he bet the flop, he probably gets a call from Phil Ivey anyway. That's very true. It's disguised his hand an awful lot, but it's also given Phil Ivey a chance at, at winning this pot two different ways. Sevens, queens and hearts. Wow, what a river. Well, that's not going to do it. Ivy might bluff at it one more time. I don't think there's any might about it. I think it's the only way he knows he can win this pot. He can give uh, Roland a big heart, so he's just got to try and bet it to try and pick it up. 6000 And he's going to bet $6,000. Well, there's no point in betting a large amount. <laughs> no point in betting anywhere near the 10000 because if he's up against, say, the Ace of Hearts or the King of Hearts, a small bet's going to win the pot as well as a big bet. And you never know. Roland DeWolf might actually have a hand, as he has. Good point, good point. Well, DeWolf's going to raise this, and unless Ivy gets really, really creative, that'll be the end of it. Obviously, Roland DeWolf with tens full of jacks. Believe it or not, he does not have the nuts. In Hold'em, I'd take my chances with that hand. Well, that's because you're a crazy man, Gary. He's played this in such a strange way. <coughs> he really has, but you can put him on a 10. Remember, he checked the turn, he checked the flop. Maybe he's got a 10, maybe he's got 10-8. But, but you raise with a 10 here with three hearts there, and that's when Phil's actually made the bet. Phil could have all this going through his mind and, and, and think that... Uh, I think maybe that DeWolf <laughs> is making this move with an ace of hearts. Good point. And Ivy obviously thinking about that. The wheel's turning. Ivy thinking, can I buy it with a re-raise here? And we both know no. And obviously he thinks that. It is an odd way to play the hand because you wouldn't think that he has two pair. Maybe he has trip tens, but would he raise with trip tens? Pot is $41,000. And obviously Phil Ivey is either going to raise this or he's going to fold. 
Five's full, maybe the only hand that Phil Ivey can really give uh, Roland here. Five's full, a definite possibility. It's almost like five's full or just an ace of hearts bluff. Roland the Wolf, his face is stone there, giving nothing away. Well, Phil's put the black chips in his hand. It's definitely going through his mind. But he's also picked up his cards. No, he's decided to muck. He was just teasing us. Roland nearly got a re-race from Ivy there, I think. His unusual way of playing the hand, nearly rewarded. He almost won a huge pot. Million dollar cash game after 312 hands. This leaderboard has gone all over the place. Tony G still in the lead. He's our big winner. He's up over $200,000. Phil Ivey now in second place, up nearly $78,000. What a turnaround. Chris Ferguson, Alan Cunningham, Roland DeWolf, all in the positive. Howard Letterer, Patrick Antonius, and Brian Townsend not doing well at all. Brian Townsend nearly down $200,000. It's the Full Tilt Poker.net Million Dollar Cash Game in association with 50 London. I'm David Tuckman alongside professional poker player Gary Jones. Yes. And what a game we have seen today, huh, Gary? Incredible. Some of the biggest pots ever shown on live television. In fact, the biggest pot ever shown on televised poker. That's right. 800 plus thousand. Phil oh, Ivey versus sorry. Patrick Antonius. What an incredible pot earlier on in this game. And I don't think right. the action's done yet. We've got a limp in first position in this pot from Patrick Antonius. A call on the button from Tony G. And Chris Ferguson seems to be thinking. Well, he's got King Jack offsuit in the small blind. And he's probably thinking, can I do a, do a dead money play here? Can I pick up the dead money with a big raise? And that's exactly what he's going to do. <laughs> well, you read that one nicely, David. He's going to get through Phil Ivey, I think. Well, when you play like Chris Ferguson or Alan Cunningham, these are the things you have to do to keep afloat. You can't just keep anting off your money and keep blinding away. Use your image. And obviously... 22 total. Obviously, Chris Ferguson has a tight image. And look at this. Phil Ivey doesn't believe him, and he is making it 22,000. There was actually a live straddle in first position. I thought that uh, Patrick Antonius had actually called. No, this was actually uh, just the first raise from uh, Chris Ferguson, trying to pick up the dead money from the live straddle. What a play by Phil Ivey. He read it just like I read it, and Phil Ivey has the guts to stick in $22,000 to take it down. <coughs> Unbelievable. I'm sure there's a little smirk there. Yep, definitely a little smirk there from Phil Ivey. And he's turned his game around. He was about 300 and something thousand down. He's now 87,000 in the plus. You can never count him out. Small blind. Well, I like, I like to play against the best players in the world. It's, it's more, more challenging. Um, it's more rewarding when you win. Um, when you lose, when, if you lose focus for even a second, you know, you could lose all your chips in the blink of an eye. And um, you have to really, you have to really uh, be on your P's and Q's when you're playing against good players. So that's why I enjoy playing with good players more. Button slides over to Chris Ferguson. Small blind Phil Ivey, big blind Patrick Antonius. Roland DeWolf looking at a jack eight of diamonds. 2001. He makes it 2100 to play. Roland DeWolf obviously much happier now than he was just a little while ago. Tony G looking at Jack 10. So careful about the way he puts his cards in there. I know you're playing when you put your wow, and Chris is sitting behind Tony G here with the Kings. Else, you didn't put your cards that neatly to fall. You didn't put your cards that neatly to fall. I might raise it. I'm entitled to it. You could do. You might take it here and now if you raise it. I don't like that. I don't like that. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> 21 says he might raise, but I'm pretty sure Chris Ferguson will raise. Jesus might raise. And that's why. 
He's in a crazy raising mood. Chris Ferguson already up sixty thousand dollars trying to add oh, chips to his stack. But unless he gets a really oh, bad beat, he is going to. And there it is, there's the re-raise. <coughs> Ninth nine thousand three total. I don't think that was quite what Roland Dwarf had in mind when he opened up the betting for 2100. I think that's the end of this pot for him. I'd be shocked if Tony Chi called as well. Want to be friendly or <laughs> make a big pot? And you can see Tony G laughing there in the background. I, I think he's already in his Tony mind G. folded. Have my suit ready and everything. All the stains down it. The stains work. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Seven feet, seven feet, seven feet. Chris Ferguson like a rock. Giving nothing <coughs> away. You try and read that poker player. The hat, okay. the glasses, I the can't hands over the mouth. Him. Exactly. We've already had at least two pots tonight where it, we weren't sure whether he was thinking or he was asleep. We can't even read him when we know what his cards are. Probably one of the reasons why he's the 2000 world champ. The only world champion at this table. My pass. He desperately wants to call Tony G, but he says pass anyway. Me. That one's going to go to uh, Chris Ferguson. Wow, I was in trouble against you. And Tony G has come back for more, but it hasn't gone as well as before. He's down about 51,000 since he's come back, but he's still up over 200. There it is. The magical trophy. Well, for the next pot. It's Roland Dwarf under the gun. He's the first to muck. Closely followed by Howard Lederer. Alan Cunningham. It's then Tony G. Ah, Jack Tent. Just a flat call. It's Phil Ivey's button, so that's a very dangerous thing to do. I'm quitting the game. That's the end of it. Don't, don't do this. King five for Chris. <laughs> oh, well, can't I can't imagine Chris Ferguson like playing this one. Well, I don't want to lose you, otherwise. I mean, you, you knocked me out two yes. times because of you. I but Phil Ivey is going to play that, and he's going to raise it. What are you doing? Come on. You read that one right. Six total. And it's Patrick Antonius in hey, the small blind. How about a king queen nine it's flop? It's fair. Give the blinds a chance. Cool. So, yeah. Might that be some action? Though. That would definitely be some action. Yeah, what, how do you think I feel? Like victim. I'm not sure whose <coughs> money would hit the flop, uh, hit the uh, the middle fastest. Oh, you deserve to be victim. Well, it's three for the flop, you think you can come and, and it's three players there. that all have some money here. Antonius with over a hundred. Not quite what we had in mind. There was four overcards to the uh, nines of Patrick Antonius, but none of them have come. If there's ever proof. That we have nothing to do with the cards. There it is. Patrick's gonna take a shot at it. Seven thousand. He's got the best hand. He's gotta like that flop. Pass. One and down, just one to go. And Ivy's <sighs> definitely in fold mode. And that motion of folding, probably the most profitable play in poker. Yeah, Good it's true. Frog. Two queens? I don't know what they're trying to do. It must be ahead. Oh, it's not just about how much you win when you've got the best hand, it's how much you lose when you've got the worst hand. Get the and and the nobody can tell you more than that than Patrick Antonius. Remember earlier he had trip aces with a 10 kicker and he lost an $800,000 pot to Phil Ivey. So this is what they're playing for. Over one and a half million dollars in action on the table. At the moment it is Tony G in pole position. We'll find out after the break if anyone can catch him. Welcome back. We've got 11 of cards, sharpest shooters, all trying to make as much profit as possible and walk away with the champion's trophy here at the fulltiltpoker.com million dollar cash game. Let's get you straight back to your commentators, Gary Jones and David Tuckman. Howard Letter, the professor, he's first to act. He's already gone broke once, but he's rebought. 
Alan Cunningham. Don't worry if that was two hours. He's been really yeah, quiet lately, two hours ago. but he's going to bump it up, and that's the reason why. You guys are real sharp. I'll tell you that much. Pass. Chris is gone. Cool. Cool from Phil Ivey. Haven't played a part with that. Haven't beat him yet. One blind down. Two blinds down, Alan Cunningham and Phil Ivey. Well, Alan knows when he... Actually, Phil knows when he calls Alan there. His 7-5 is probably live, and it is. Interesting flop here. Phil Ivey with the flush draw. Alan's missed. Ace high still good. And you can see by the percentages, it's pretty much a coin flip as to who will win this pot. A bet and a call. That's not really what Alan wanted to see. And what do you do if you're Alan Cunningham? Do you just shut down now? I you think you do shut fold? down now. Yeah, exactly. That's the beauty of position. Check. Ace King. They call it the Anna Kornikova of poker. Looks pretty. Rarely wins. <laughs> I mean, we should put some cards there. Like Phil just that. counting out how many thousand chips to throw in the middle. Eight. <laughs> that 8,000 bet's probably going to end this hand. Yeah. As much as I'm sure that Alan Cunningham would like to play with Anna Kornikova, he's not going to be this time. Yeah, pot is 21,900. Even if you put Ivy on jack 10 or clubs... It's tough to continue here because you've got to realize that if he has that hand and he misses on the river, you're going to be forced to call about a $20,000 bet on the river. Yes. Little grin from uh, Phil, oh, yeah, taking yeah. that one down with a bluff. <laughs> well, a semi-bluff. Maybe a long time ago And Ivy is now up about $90,000. What a turnaround. And there's that big smile from Phil Ivey originally from New Jersey Phil Ivey used to sneak into the Atlantic City casinos using the fake ID and he was called Jerome for a few years until he actually turned 21 years old introduced himself as Phil Ivey and showed everybody his real ID I don't get it I don't want to win something can you imagine how sick you'd be if you'd lost an awful lot of money to Phil Ivey while he was sneaking in there with the fake ID? I'm sure a lot of players have. Wouldn't they have a trophy? Action with Alan. Well, I imagine some people would actually be proud of that. Tell their grandkids, I lost money to Phil Ivey. Black call from Tony with a weak ace. Cool. Phil Ivey's in the pot as well. He's got 10 8. He's also Four got the button with that call. I don't know. I'm <laughs> Patrick and Brian have uh, thrown away their hand. Roland's called. That's the most you can get anyway. No, I just want anyway. to. Want to no, just right. Now, when you say he has the button, what do you mean by that? <laughs> it basically means that uh, he's going to be the last one to act once the flop, flop comes down. It shows you like anyone Although he's not technically on the button because the two players behind him have both passed, he's going to have uh, the best position. He's also got the best hand here. It's possible, right? Having caught the eight. You win all the money. You win a buy in. You win a buy in, yeah. They did it before. And you like you have to play whatever number of hands. You can't lose. Whatever you do that. And Phil Ivey this is betting. Right. And it looks like Phil Ivey is winning this pot. You work it out so they can't like get blind. And it's as if something just turned a little <laughs> while ago. Exciting. Phil Ivey could not win a pot. I don't even think he kept stepping in it. Account. Nothing was going his way. And then suddenly, suddenly he just started winning and winning and winning. And he has nearly $900,000 in front of him. Look at that mound of chips. We should have. I'd love to have that at the bike. And you get the trophy. Brian Townsend's been very quiet. He'll probably win a big pot. Putting the pink ribbons on it already. He's down almost $200,000. He's actually our big loser tonight. If you probably want to move in with five aces, you still want to call. I want to win a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if that's politically correct. Should I say it's the biggest non-winner? Well, 600. How much do you 600? Roland DeWolf. Wakes up with pocket sevens. 
for this, the last hand of the uh, full tilt poker.net million dollar cash game. Count the props. Yeah, you can count the props. And Tony GR, big winner. He's on the button. I want Tony in this hand. Just. Don't just, worry, I'm going to be in this hand. I have a chance of taking the trophy away. I, I and he's got 10 9 suited. Our five. big winner is definitely going to play this one. If I double three, it is the trophy. You said one, right? Five. You had the trophy without that, didn't you? Just the trophy. And he raises what? it up. Chris Ferguson with a quick call. I can't lose it. I can't well, lose it now. All in on each other. <laughs> yeah, if Tony G just then, calling. Um, right? We see this three ways to the flop. Nine, eight, three. <laughs> Once again, Tony G catches a nice flop. Top pair. Roland Wolf going to do the continuation bet with the pocket sevens. As soon as he gets a caller from Tony G, he's going to switch <laughs> off. It's not a bad flop for pocket sevens. The only problem is when you bet and you get called by Tony G. Do you know if Tony G has a nine here or a club draw or maybe a straight draw? It's a free roll. Chris Ferguson yeah. folds his hands and the pot is now 13,400. Well, that's got to be a scary card for both players. Yeah, strong bet here would actually be enough, possibly for Roland to win it. It's up to you, Roland. Easier said than done. He was up about 21,000 at the start of this hand. I think you're nervous on that turn, right? Have a bet anyway. Feel it. 15, you should bet. 15 would take it? You should bet 15. <laughs> Always drawing. <laughs> Look at that. Tony G showing him how much to bet. There's our big winner. Check. Up over two hundred thousand dollars. I bet. Oh, there you go. 15, you get a check from the wolf, and Tony G decides to bet 15,000, and that's probably yeah, going to be enough to take it down. Sorry? And it is. We'll see one card. Yeah. Which one? And this full tilt poker.net million dollar cash game <laughs> finishes the way it starts. Tony G wins the first hand, wins the last hand, and wins a lot in between. And with that, let's get our final chip count. Tony G, our big winner, he's up $223,000. Phil Ivey, what a story, what a turnaround. He finishes up $101,000. Chris Ferguson, always steady. He wins $62,000. Alan Cunningham, one of my favorite players to watch, $47,000. Roland DeWolf, nice turnaround there. He wins $16,000. Howard Letterer, the professor, not a good day. He's down $104,000. Patrick Antonius, he's involved in the biggest pot in the history of televised poker. Unfortunately for him, he's on the losing end, and he's down $128,000. Brian Townsend, a.k.a. SB Rugby, on full tilt, he's down almost $200,000. Well, after 20 grueling hours of poker, I am here with the champ. That's got to sound pretty good. Um, Tony G, how does it feel to have come out on top with some of the world's greatest poker players? Yeah, it's very, very, it's great. You know, I'm humbled, I'm fortunate, and I really wanted to win, so I'm proud of the effort. You obviously were, were pretty well up when you came back to the table for one last hurrah. Were you just showing your face again, or did you want to add to, to what you'd achieved already? No, I was prepared to play, but uh, I wanted to be there for the end to see if I had to do anything in terms of if it got very close, but I was well in front and I just wanted at the end and uh, win the, the trophy. You have got the trophy. Are you going to find a place on the mantelpiece for it? Yeah, I'll find it. There's no problem. And obviously as well, you know, you've succeeded Phil Ivey uh, as champion of this tournament. Um, does that add a little bit extra for you and, and what makes this tournament so special? It's very special to succeed Phil Ivey, especially last year. I was second and Phil Ivey just beat me. I think this year he's second and I think we'll play again next year. Can we expect to see you back next year and, and eager for more? Yeah, for sure. I'll be back next year and uh, I'll defend I'll defend my trophy, my title. With your life, no doubt. Tony, it's been great to watch. Many congratulations. I ended up down 197k, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, pretty much, uh, I think I played really well today. Um, there was one big pot that I lost to Patrick uh, where I called the 150k on the river and, you know, that had a big final impact on my two-day expectations. So, um, not much I can do, you know. I uh, should have folded, I guess, but if I had been right there, you know, that I would have been a winner for the game. So, um, you know, one bad 
call in a such a short session is going to have a huge effect on your outcome. Well, I'm very happy with the way I played. I, you know, I've never really gotten any big confrontations. Always trying to take the medium-sized pots, and uh, that worked. Played played reasonably tight. All the, uh, you know, making use of my position. I had some very loose players behind me, which is, isn't where you want them. You want the loose players uh, to your right. If you have them behind you, you really have to tighten up a little bit. I wouldn't say I believed a hand like that was coming. I was hoping for one. And um, it ended up it ended up happening. I lost a pot to him yesterday, where it was a similar situation where he made a full house on the end. So that was the start of uh, everything bad for me in the poker game. So it was nice that the hand came up, to, you know, especially uh, being that there was only an hour left. There was a lot of luck involved. What an amazing pot! I mean, the largest ever on TV, and uh, it was good to witness it. I uh, am yeah, my friend Patrick. I wasn't pleased to see him lose, but you know, it, it goes like that sometimes. But how history being made? I've been in these all these high stakes cash game shows lately, and uh, I love this. I think it's the best show. I love to watch, watch this uh, a lot, and because uh, it's it's for real money. It's way more exciting than seeing people just throwing uh, tournament chips and. Uh, you see people betting millions, but the first price can be 100,000 or 200,000, you know, and, and uh, this is real poker and the best players are here. Tony G, with a profit of $223,000, wins the second annual FullTiltPoker.net million dollar cash game. He stands next to table director Barry Mundy, who hands him the coveted trophy. Tony G, very happy, very excited. And he wins it all with a profit of $223,000. Well, it has been a grueling 20 hours of poker here, but now it's all over. It's congratulations firstly to our new champion, Tony G, and it's congratulations as well to Phil Ivey, who has taken down the largest ever pot in a televised cash game. History's been made, but from all of us, it's bye for now.